to the day or pretty close I'll check later I pr uh, I promised a review of this machine here the Bowflex Max Trainer I'm gonna jump on it uh, right now one last time and then uh, give the final review right after I step off of it um, to help provide some authenticity mm -hmm. Okay, so 27 and a half minutes based on a video I was watching on uh, YouTube. A little out of breath. I'll, uh, I'll need to catch my breath, but uh, initial thoughts um, that I'll explain a little more in detail are the machine has lots of, of uh, pros to it um, and the cons that it has um, they're they're more uh, about about uh, how you'd use the machine. Um, I discovered some interesting things in the past year. One thing in particular uh, about use of the machine, and uh, so I, I can't really fault the machine on anything specifically, other than of course it's it's generic in in size and shape. So the handles, uh, you know, you reach down or out in front of you. I mean, if these were adjustable. That'd be really nice, um, and uh, that's about it. I mean, the machine's not super heavy duty, but it's it's more designed for home use, um, and we've used it pretty heavy this past year without any any uh, serious problems with it. So, uh, although making this video and <clears throat> mentioning that we train clients on it probably voids the warranty. Uh, and again, I should reiterate if I haven't at some point here that uh, we're not getting paid to do this review. Uh, in fact, uh, Bowflex has no idea we're giving this review. This was just a machine that we chose uh, for a couple of different reasons. The main one just being that it was sort of interesting and we like interesting different forms of resistance and um, Nautilus, who we uh, get the main part of our machines from, uh, owns Bowflex. Now we didn't get a deal on it, we bought it privately and that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, we just thought it was interesting. Anyway, I'm just gonna catch my breath, quit, and uh, have a little sip of water, and then I'll get into the, uh, the meat of it. We've had the Max Trainer now, uh, this is probably the 10th time I've mentioned it in this video, I think the past year. I haven't actually looked it up yet. Uh, it's an interesting machine. Um, but the really interesting thing is that in our ilk of personal training, and fitness instruction, um, we favor strength training. So it's our understanding of physiology that the best way to get in shape is to get strong build, lean muscles, strong bones, strong connective tissue, uh, do strength training by training very hard, very briefly, moving fairly quickly between exercises so that you get the cardiovascular benefit, the stamina benefit, as well as the strength training benefit. Um, so uh, items like a cardio sort of based unit, like the, the Bullflex Max Trainer are, are not favored very much by people like us. We're called high intensity trainers. Um, it's all born of a thing called Nautilus, uh, the original equipment manufacturers, but <sighs> there's always been sort of, um, a curiosity with cardio training because as much as you strength train properly, you'll still notice when you go out on the ice to skate play some hockey or go for a run or go for a swim that you get out of breath. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that the activity you do um, is where you see the greatest change in stamina. So if you swim all the time and you never bike and then you jump on a bike and start biking, especially if you bike on some hills, you'll notice you get quite out of breath biking compared to when you're swimming. 
So what you practice is what you get good at. Um, and there's a lot of debate of whether there's any real crossover between one, one cardiovascular activity and another. Um, you know, like if you, if you were to box and boxing in rounds of, of three minutes, taking a break and then really hard for three minutes, that sort of high int intensity interval training, sprinting, coasting, sprinting, coasting kind of training develops a certain type of stamina, um, that's good, but it doesn't necessarily cross over to, um, the kind of stamina you'd need for a all out long distance run. And I kind of, I don't use the max trainer much. Uh, my partner, Tierney uses it all the time, which is no surprise because she's got a lot of stamina naturally. Uh, she's got really good legs, really good wind. Um, she likes the, the way it makes her feel to do heavy activity almost every day. She likes to be very physical, very active. She's very athletic. Uh, believe it or not, I'm not particularly athletic, never was. Um, anything I have, as far as athleticism goes, was was purely trained into me over time. Um, but she is very athletic, so she feels really good doing athletic activity, so she uses it all the time. So we have two quite different perspectives, but they both sort of add up to the same thing, and that's that the max trainer is hard. It's really hard, and we like intense exercise. Um, that's short duration. So the longer you have to exercise for, the lower the intensity that you could exercise for. So the max trainer definitely gets two thumbs up in that regard that it's really a difficult machine. Um, well, at the same time, and this is our other big criteria for exercise, and that's that it's safe. It's a very safe machine. Uh, it's even safer than an elliptical, although it seems very similar to an elliptical in, in movement. It's actually a shorter stroke. It's more like a mushy, mushy kind of stair climb movement uh, mixed with a little upper body. Now you don't get a lot of upper body out of it, even when you try to, to use the handles, but you do get a little bit, but it's mostly a, a leg exercise. Um, so from the top, the, the max trainer's cons would be in the way you used it. If you tried to use this machine on its own to get in shape, it'd be a heck of a lot better than being a couch potato, but you wouldn't really build any overall uh, strength with it, uh, but you would end up with more strength and, and a sense of more stamina for when you're walking and hiking and that sort of thing than you would if you didn't do it. So it's definitely a million times better than being a couch potato, um, but being a couch potato actually destroys your health. So I don't think it's a really good measure of, of whether or not the machine is uh, something that you should get or something that you should uh, look into. Um, I think in combination with strength training, of course, I'm going to say that, but I think in combination with strength training, it's a, it's a very good machine, but the why is sort of interesting and it's not something I noticed right away. Um, I noticed it over time, putting different clients on it just to see their reaction on it. So what I would do is I'd put clients on it for very short intervals, but it has some pretty high intensity settings. So you can go from one to uh, 16. And you know, when you get in around eight, 10, 12 in intensity, it's very difficult and kind of reminds you uh, like a typical strength training leg exercise. It's really quite difficult to do. Um, something I've known about legs for a long time when it comes to leg training, and this is what I was doing with my clients, is that they take time to build up to their highest level. So unlike a lot of upper body muscles, you'll often notice with your legs that you can lift more weight, even though it might not feel that way. If you actually test yourself and, and check this from one workout to the other, you can actually lift more weight with your legs and do more with your legs once they're quite dramatically fatigued. So legs are really designed for you to be up and on them and they have a lot of endurance. So without getting into a long discussion of how muscles work and boring you, muscles have a bunch of different types of muscle fiber in them and you can think of it as a bunch of different gears. So there's gears for going uphill, there's gears for going downhill, there's gears for going flat out. And you need to sort of get through the less strong muscle fibers, fatigue them uh, enough to get them out of the way and then dig in and get at the muscle fibers that can actually be influenced to get dramatically stronger. Uh, there, there's a whole, you can look up and Google slow twitch fibers versus fast twitch fibers, high threshold versus low threshold fibers. But suffice to say that the max trainer is a really efficient way to fatigue the legs enough that you can jump into very few leg exercises at a very high level of weight. See, there's the problem with weight training. 
especially if you're not being instructed while you're weight training, is it, it can be unsafe over time. As you lift greater and greater weight as you get stronger, uh, you run the risk of hurting your lower back, maybe your knees, that sort of thing. It could become kind of tricky and it can be hard on your joints over time. This machine is probably easier on your, your leg joints than any machine that I've tried. Um, not that I'm easy on my joints. I'm not going to say that you shouldn't be a type of person to exercise in a fashion that's not easy on your joints. I have recently sort of gotten more serious about trail running and that's kind of hard on your joints going up hills and down hills. Um, but weight training, strengthening your legs, strengthening any part of your body shouldn't be the thing that's destroying your joints. It should be the thing that's helping repair your joints and keep them strong. So if you want to go play, uh, you're going to have to pay. It's going to be hard on your joints over time. Um, and exercise is supposed to be sort of like preventative medicine. Um, and using this machine to pre-fatigue your legs, we'd call it, so get them good and tired, and then doing your leg exercises, it cuts down on time quite a bit. Um, it does let you get some tolerance to getting good and winded, uh, which can happen when you leg train. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people get held back in their leg training. They don't like to train their legs hard because they do get winded. They're, you're using your largest muscles of your body, whether you're a male or a female, and you're taxing a lot of muscle there. It's not like going for a jog where you're your only resistance is a little bit of movement forward in some of your body weight. When you put a lot of weight on your legs, you use a lot more muscle. It's a huge draw in your cardiovascular, uh, cardiopulmonary system. So uh, this does help with that. It does help you build some tolerance to leg training and pre-fatigues the legs quick enough that only a few sets for legs afterwards is required to get a really good leg workout. I mean, the pump when you get off this thing is incredible, um, especially the first couple of times you ever try it. And if you push yourself hard on it, meaning varying the levels, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, I did 27 and a half minutes today. Um, you could burn yourself out in 10 minutes on this thing. Um, I often put clients on for three to five minutes tops, sometimes only two minutes, and their legs are just pumped and they're, and they're completely out of breath afterwards. Um, so it's the use of the tool. I mean, it re really comes down to it. It's sort of a generic machine, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, I'm not sure if I think it's a little pricey or not. It hasn't broken down and we've used it a lot. So I, I thought at first it was a little pricey and you're kind of paying for the name um, considering it's just, it's just plastic. There's not, you know, there's not really that much steel, but there's steel where it counts. Um, I, I don't think anymore that it's, it's really that pricey as far as exercise machines go. And especially compared to big elliptical machines that I've seen of the same price, it takes up a lot less space and it seems a lot better. The activity, the action of the movement has been really well thought through. Um, so in that regard, it, it definitely is a plus. Um, I, I don't want to go too much further into it because I'll probably bore you and I can see I've been going on for about 10 minutes here already. I'm going to say that the machine is worth the investment. Um, don't expect it to be, to cover everything for you fitness wise. I definitely think there's an advantage to having it uh, as, as part of your strength training program. Um, it, it's not going to replace strength training. It's not going to replace getting outside and going for walks and hikes and, and participating in sports. It's not going to, but it's going to be a good thing to have as a foundation around. And, um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, <laughs> I don't even know really in my review of one to 10, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it a, a good, Eight and a half out of ten. I mean, there's a few things that I would change about it, um, but they're not necessarily imperative, but they definitely would make it a better machine. And they may or may not, depending on how well it did when it was being sold, they may or may well not update a few of those things like adjustable handles and adjustable foot uh, pads on it and that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, otherwise, definitely an eight and a half out of ten, which is a pretty high score for us. I would consider most equipment that you see uh, being a five out of 10. So if that tells you anything, uh, any questions, feel free to, to comment or email us and, uh, we'd be glad to help you. Thanks.